Hi, my name's Adrian Whittle and you're joining me here today on the wonderful River Wye at Ross. Now, this is a syndicate stretch, but there is loads of venues available like this on the river. That, through Day Ticket or through a guy called um, Adam Fisher who runs a company called Angling Dreams. Now, with the river levels being so low, all the fish are in the far shallow water. And what that means is there's no better time to get out and float fish for barbel. Today, we're gonna to fish uh, waggler and stick float. We're gonna start on the stick. This is just a very simple eight number four Woody's dome top stick, shotted with a string of number eights, two thirds of the way down. A little Creluso swivel, 017 hook length and a size 14 hook. Basic stuff, but really, really fantastic fishing. I mean, I'm looking out there now, I can actually see barbel rolling under the surface. So I reckon we should get out there and have a go. Right, so we're out in the water today. And this is a, one of the most important factors, really, when you're fishing these shallow, fast water pegs. I mean, this peg is only accessible maybe a week or two of the year. Now, the key is, once you get out here, firstly, I have to stress that while we're now perfectly safe, everything's solid and stable, you have to take care when you're gonna fish pegs like this, make sure you, you tread carefully. You, every time as you walk out, you place one foot, make sure it's solid and come out slowly. Find a decent spot, like we found here, we're basically sat on a big rock. It's three foot deep behind us and probably six or seven foot off a rod end. So we've done a recce, we wandered round, found a way across some shallower stones and come and plonked ourselves here. Now years ago, we would have just come out with a bait apron and had a bit of bait and no landing net and we would have stood in the water and dropped your catapult. Nowadays, we've got great platforms, great boxes like this, where you can get everything set in the water Everything's to hand, stable, you're safe. You can even, say when you're fishing, you can cast out, run the float through, hook them, and then you can stand up, which you need to do when you're playing big fish to gain extra control. So basically, if you're gonna get yourself a day on the river in some fast water, get yourself a decent pair of waders, I mean, you don't have to get these, these are obviously, I do a lot of wading. These are a um, Daiwa boot wader, which are absolutely fantastic, but any, any waders are fine. You have a decent pair of waders, decent box or platform. Get yourself out in the water, get everything solid, safe and comfortable, get all your bait around you, and then you can enjoy a fantastic day's fishing. Right, bait wise today, hemp and cast is the main bait. Simple reason, Barb will love it. The hemp, obviously, just as we all know, gets fish into a feeding frenzy. We would generally, generally when I'm river fishing, I try and cast and feed. But because of the pace of the water here, and the fact I want to be able to control the rig straight away over the top of the feed, I'm actually going to go the other way around mostly. Feed, chuck the float on top of it, get behind it, and hopefully latch into some barbel. Um, I've also got a few four mil garlic pellets. I should just feed these sparingly, again, just to help hold fish in the swim. And then for later on, I suspect that we'll have a run of fish and then it'll get harder. We've got some meat. Every now and then we'll put a piece of meat on and hopefully we'll pick up the odd bonus fish on that. We've also got some maggots. I tend to be away from feeding maggots at this time of year. Simple reason is they're a bit light, so they travel a lot further down the swim. And they also, you, you tend to attract minnows, little dace, chublets. But having said that, occasionally, when bites have dried up, it's worth pouching in eight or 10 pouchfuls. And sometimes, again, it will get the barbel interested after they've backed off. There's no good fishing small fine wire hooks. We need to fish a decent size hook. Barbel like a big bait, so you can fish four or five maggots on a 14 or a 12. Um, generally, I either use Kamasan animals. I've got some maver hooks here I've been trying. They seem very good. Um, if I'm in a really, really snaggy peg, I will switch to something even, uh, even stronger. I'd use these 
the specimen plus, but they're a thick hook, so you really need to be using a strong rod and to set them. That's the key. I mean, with these finer, finer um, maver hooks, obviously, I'm able to set the hook much easier. And as long as I can keep the fish out of the snags, I'll stay with this. If I'm having trouble, then that's when I'll step up to something heavier. Okay, let me just talk you through um, shotting patterns for stick floats. But generally in faster water, it's best to get the weight down. Now, I, I normally shot the rigs in the bottom half to, two, to the bottom third. A simple pattern, this is just number eights, about 12, 14 mil apart, spread in the bottom third, and then a 35 centimetre hook length with no shot on. Now that's really important, because what you're doing is we lay the rig in, we get behind it, and then as we hold it back, these shot will keep the bait down, or the, the rig down, but then your hook length will lift enticingly. And if you ever watch bait on the bottom of a river, you'll see it doesn't just go down, it stops, and then it will roll around as the current on the bottom is, is sort of, you remember the bottom of the river is not even, so the flow is not even, and bait will literally roll around in a circle and then go again. So by stopping your hook bait, you're actually mimicking that action. And it, you'll often find as you hold it, just as you let it go, bang, you'll catch them. And hopefully we can put that to the test now. Okay? So we'll feed a couple of pouches of bait. So the reason we're feeding first today, is because of the pace and the downstream wind. We want to be in full control of the float for these barbel. So we're feeding first, we flick the rig in, just let it run till it gets to a point where we can get behind it without pulling it offline. Then it gets to about there, we just flick the bail arm over and just inch the float down. Whack! Look at that. Perfect. It's not a massive fish, this, but I don't have to be with these barbel to give you a bit of a a bit of a go. What I do is I actually start off facing downstream using the flow to help fight the fish, to help keep it out of the out of the far bank trees. Now, you have to be able to trust your tackle when you're fishing for big fish like this. So I know that that 017 hook length and four pound maxima is more than capable of holding this fish. Okay, unbelievably, it's the first one he's got in there. Okay, we've given it a bit of line, it's come back out. This is basically a you get to that point where you just have to hold, feel the fish. What we do when we get them out of those, because of the amount of rocks on the bottom, once we get them out of the trees, actually bring the rod up. And then we'll try and guide the fish up the peg. You don't have to bully it, because if you pull really hard, they tend to pull back harder. So just Get it swimming up the peg. Okay, so he's found the other tree now. So we've got him out, out from under the trees. What we try and do is guide it. into this deeper water in front of us. Really is a good fish, this. And it's a big difference between playing barbel on the float and the feeder. I think with a feeder rod, you've got loads of power in the bottom of the rod. 
and you've got the weight of the feeder taking out of the fish. With the float, of course, you've got much softer action. So you do have to play the fish a lot more carefully. So if you've got balanced tackle, there's no reason why you can't land a lot more than you lose. So now I play the fish into a position where it's above me. It's a big old fish, this. So what I do is, I know the first time it comes to the top, it's going to, it's not going to be ready. So don't even think about getting the landing net. Until I know that the fish is beaten. And of course the other thing is, barbling clear water, do tend to fight a lot harder because they can see where they're going. You get high coloured rivers, you can quite often net them, net them in, well, sometimes in less than a minute. It's a great cracking fish, this. So I bring him up there. We haven't got him up once yet, so let's just see if he's get him get him first gulp of air in a minute. A lot of people use a clutch. For me, it's all about feel. So I just use a second hand on the rod here, especially when it's underneath the rod, just to feel the lunges and play the fish accordingly. Okay, so he's. Starting to tire. Uh, let's give him his first gulp of air. And there you go, tail slap. Let's say he's going to have another one of those before he's ready. Yep. One more. And this time he's ready. And that. That's how you land barbel on the stick float. We've had some fantastic sport on the stick float here today, but we're now going to switch to a speci wag. Now these speci wags, truncheons, call them what you will. Um, I'm not sure whether they were invented by Dave Harrell, but they were certainly popularised by him. And um, they've been a fantastic innovation to modern river match fishing. So we've got a thick bolster tip waggler. And what they allow you to do is drag lots of line on the bottom and sometimes shot as well. So you shot them to there and then the line and the shot dragging on the bottom slows the float down without it going under. And then as the fish takes it, obviously, bang. Now, they have lots of advantages over a stick float and probably one disadvantage. The advantages are you can cast them a lot further, you can fish at much greater distances, you can fish them in the wind, even a da nasty downstream wind. You can fish them in really, really shallow, really fast pegs, sometimes just too shallow and too fast for stick floats. You can also see them a long way down. I've caught on a speci wag at 80 metres before. Um, I was next to Dave Roberts at the time. I thought I'd got a huge weight. I weighed 40 pounds, I spent all day winding fishing. But any other float, you could never would have been able to see it at that distance. But the idea is now, so we've fished a stick float where we've got behind the float, checked it, and the fish have taken it as you slowed it up. Well now we're going to drag the bait through, so it's going to go through backwards, with the line dragging on the bottom and some shot, slowing the bait up, and hopefully we'll catch some barbel on this. I mean the other thing with this is, with the stick, because of the trees, we've not been able to get in tight. With this waggler, we should be able to get tight to the far bank and pick up those fish that have now backed away from the feed. Right then, let's give it a go. Oh, there's another. 
So same as with the stick float in this peg today, I should feed first. Now normally, I'd say you need to cast well downstream, but because of the peg, actually the only place we can get in is to cast almost straight in front, and we just let everything run for a minute before we get behind it. The same as a stick, once it gets to about there, just get my line in behind it, pick the line up off. Oh, we've got a small fish straight away. That'll be a chublet, no doubt. You notice we're not using a keep net today. In these hot, hot conditions with a river so low, um, for pleasure sessions, it's just no need to put fish in nets, especially big barbel. Uh, you see pictures of people with large nets of fish on the bank. It's not good for the fish, and there's no need. Oh, nearly put it in the tree there. Okay, so we've got that running right tight to the far bank. You can still see some barbel out there. So this is the thing, you can't check this, so you just have to let it go. In many ways it's a lot easier to fish than the stick float. And I say you can use it in a lot more varied conditions. And there's a barbel. Oh, it might not be. Oh, it is. So we've got a much shorter rod here. We don't need that long rod because we say we can't get, we physically can't get behind the float to check it. So we're just using a 13 foot power rod here. Okay, so a lot of anglers use a clutch. No, I've never never used one. And there's a few reasons. One is you actually haven't got the same control with a clutch. I mean, these fish are trying to run up the far bank. And physically, if, if I've got the clutch set, I can't actually stop them. Whereas here, it gets to the point where I decide they're not having any more line then I can just lock everything up. Because I've done it... I reckon this one might be fouled up, because I've done it for so long. You get a feel for exactly when to backwind and when you can lock and hold.
So it's another big fish. I'll get him up, get some air in him. There's the tail slap. Next time. What a way to finish. Yet another perfect white barbel.